Hi, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Today we're going to be pulling apart a critical battery. <laughs> Let's see if this thing's worth 300 bucks. All right. All right, now that's over with the critical battery. Now I was, uh, I got this one at the shop, it got dropped kind of cracked the case but it still looks like it's in really good working order so i figured hey why don't we just take this thing apart and see what it's actually made of <laughs> the critical batteries msrp is a lot um and i've had some complaints about just battery packs in general like you know we pulled apart that other couple machines here in the past and i mean when you actually look at the inside of these the, the batteries and the boards and everything else that's being made with this it's not really complex you know you have an rca or a dc or a phono plug some wires a pcb board and a battery and it seems like a lot of the cost of these ends up going to branding so this is the first out of many of the other ones we're going to be getting here that maybe are worth a little bit more <laughs> than some of the uh knockoff or uh international brands is what i would like to call them personally um to to see what's going on with this right because i mean realistically these these machines that we're buying and these power supplies and all this stuff i mean they, they shouldn't in my mind cost as much as they do but i also don't set the prices of this and i'm not a manufacturer and i don't know what all this stuff costs to ship etc etc et et so rather than that i just take them apart and complain so anyways here we go simple breakdown of the battery we got lcd kind of display I don't know. So it looks like one of those old billboard <laughs> screens on this. Uh, fires up. Is it color or not? It's black and white. Simple display. Um, seems pretty clean on the inside and outside. Um, past the initial corrosion on the back part of the port here, which probably comes down to just cleaning. Uh, there's no real gasket or break around where these USB-C uh, plugs are, which is kind of crazy, um, to me at least. Because like, when you're cleaning this, if you're using you know, high-grade uh, stuff, it's going to end up like, getting in here and corroding that stuff. I mean, it does have a bit of a bevel on the edge where it sits against that, uh, that USB-C port, but especially because you have like all of these electrical bits just right here there's no buffer plate like we've had with the other ones where at least you have like uh, a screw set plate that's holding everything together that maybe has epoxy or something else that's blocking it this seems kind of i don't know it's lacking is the best way to say it because there's something missing that's protecting this and we can tell right now from this battery which is actually not that old it seems to have a lot of corrosion on the inside uh same with the screw ends here where these are, right? There's a ton of corrosion on there. It means that there's a lot of stuff getting inside of this. Um, and it may not be the cleanest material, <laughs> or it may not be the cleanest uh, product based on how these materials are degrading already. Um, so either it's it's manufactured this way, um, just with you know process in mind, we wanna keep it simple, it's quick to go. Uh, but when you start seeing things break down like this, I mean, the, the longevity of it is in question, right? Because the more time that this stuff spends getting cleaned up and maybe, you know, getting softened up, maybe the plastic on this stuff from a little bump ended up shattering or whatever type of glue that may have been on there attaching this may have ended up shattering just because it's been eaten away so much by those, those corrosive chemicals that are so important in tattooing. So anyways, let's see if we can get this thing fired up again here. The screen seems to be uh, just not showing up anything though, which is interesting. Rubber mounts on the back, keep it so it's got shock absorbers. It literally does. It's got little rubber shock absorbers that's on there. We can go ahead and run this out. Let's see, first off, one of our test machines. If it's actually running, it is, which is great. So let's test our voltages on this. First off, the battery right now is right there grab our marker we got a yby 752034 asterisk 3p that's 3.7 volts at 1500 milliamp hours 
and it's rated at 5.55 watt hours. So this is about the same battery, even though the profile is a little bit different, as that Dragonhawk machine that we had. Um, but it seems to be a little bit less available power uh, than that uh, Yi Long one that we had initially done, which is kind of interesting. Yi Long, you can get those two batteries, I think, for like 75 bucks. And this is a bit more than that. So let's test power on output here where we're at. Let's flip this so we don't blow anything up. Which I know this probably has short protection, but still, it's already damaged. See so at the battery mount here, we've got 4.93 volts, which is about the same as we had with the Yi Long, which is kind of interesting. So 4.93 volts tested. And our output after going through PCB, because I can't actually see the screen right now, where we're at. We are sitting at about seven. Ooh, we got a lot of spikes going on here. 7.51 volts. It'd be interesting if we can get, if we can actually get the battery. Ooh. We can actually get this thing set up and, and displaying correctly because if we can, it'd be really neat to see what the potential voltage is on this. Perhaps it is absolutely accurate. Wouldn't that be nice? Everything else we tested has been wildly inaccurate especially when it comes from some of these international sellers. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get that screen working again, put this back together, and then let's give it a proper test on one of these machines. So one more second before we, we put this back together, I ended up taking out the buttons on the critical, and I've had these complaints about the buttons going in and them sitting and they don't have like a thick enough flange to sit strongly against it to make sure that you keep some stuff out. This critical batteries, these are fantastic, or the, the buttons on this battery. They are snug as a bug. They sit so well in there. The additional flanging on the outside actually keeps it really, really, really tight against the inside of this. I mean, look at that. That is crazy how much of an extra side uh, edge on that side that they have. Um, and they are like firm to set inside this case. So, I mean, there's a one up on, on the manufacturing of some. This stuff is, is tight, tight, tight. So that's good. Go ahead and put this back together. Let me check this out. I was just getting back to put it together and the actual wire uh, for this ended up popping off and taking a look at where the solder line is there. I didn't even notice it before, but it was like really weakly on there. And the wire wasn't even really truly connected, which could have been from the fall, could have been from something else, but that's fine. Anyways, taking that off, I decided to pop the uh, RCA port out uh, for where we connected here. It's got this plastic shield on it. It's got some glue. I ended up taking out these, these screws, but my God, look at the corrosion on that inside there. There's so much seepage getting in here, even pulling it off. I mean, there is, there's literally, and you can smell it. There's cleaner and gunk all on the inside of this. And with this piece of plastic here, that's got that adhesive set on top of it, guarding the screws. So you can't take it apart, which yeah, sorry guys, we did that. Um, you can see how much is actually dipping down in here. Without a backplate on this trying to protect it, there is so much additional corrosion in here. I honestly think that that's why this thing ended up breaking with a little bit of a tumble. Uh, is that it's just it's just gone. Like it's so beat up and it's so chewed up and so munched up from those chemicals that it ended up deteriorating the plastic enough that this thing started to fall apart. So uh, because of that, we're going to attempt to uh, fix everything, which we got our screen back now. It wasn't 7.5 volts. Man, that was precise. Holy smokes. Wow, that's nice. Well, critical, you get you get an A plus on that, guys. Heck yeah. The actual design on the backing of this is a little bit shoddy, but anyways, we'll go ahead and put it together and we'll do some more tests and see how this thing works. All right. Fully clean back up, reassembled, ended up heat welding this thing closed around the outsides. So now it's a nice little sealed unit. And uh it works, it works pretty good. So uh, voltage testing on this when I was running, I mean, like this thing is, is dead nuts. Um, cycling through everything as whatever is available and not, I mean, like this thing is probably the most precise battery that I have tested so far. Um, even if it is really shoddy and kind of flimsily put together, the actual makeup of the uh, circuitry in the board and uh, all the connections and stuff seem to be of 
much better quality than what is available on some of these international brands that, that, that I've gone over so far. So, I mean, bonus to uh, Critical for that. Like, you know, I don't think that this mach this this battery pack is worth as much as what it, it costs personally. But um, if you are into precision type stuff and having constant um, things that you know you, you can you can rely on when you're using them, this thing's pretty pretty awesome. Um, so that's that. If you like this, let us know. Uh, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Buy a hat. Uh, past that, we've got a whole bunch more machines to pull apart. So we'll put these videos up here soon. And until uh, next time, I guess. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Oh, 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 oh.